Hey Oaks family, peace be with you. Um, miss you, love you, long to see you soon. Um, I know it's been a crazy uh, and tragic few days. If you've, as you probably have, watched the news, we've just experienced a lot of loss. And um, I feel it, I know many of you feel it. Um, many of us are stressed and afraid, and I get that. And I just want you to know as your pastor, that's okay. I encourage you please to express those things to God, just to be very clear, like the Psalms, the, so much of the modern church unfortunately does not recognize this or doesn't speak to this very often or show this, but the, the Bible is full, particularly in the Psalms, of moments when people that loved God and um, were seeking to be faithful to God still felt uh, moments of deep uh, disorientation, meaning they felt um, they had moments in life where things didn't make sense and they felt God was almost being silent or absent and um, and really expressed that. And if you haven't already and you have felt those moments, it's okay. I want you to know to pray those things. Um, but I, I want to take us to a psalm, Psalm 23, famous psalm, because I want to I put a, an idea in, in front of you um, to maybe stir some encouraging thoughts and questions and um, maybe even you might feel inclined to express some of that with me, to share some of that with me. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. But um, I was drawn to Psalm 23 yesterday, just hearing some of the things. Um, this, like this, one of the things that I know you've probably seen is this idea of alone together. And I thought, well, yeah, we're practicing this idea of we're all kind of alone, but together in that. Process and I thought, well, we've may not we've been in that place for some time now. <laughs> um, but Psalm twenty three is so interesting to think about in this particular time. One, it's giving this imagery of sheep and shepherd, and um, we don't necessarily always in our modern times connect with that. But I think it becomes so relevant now because this virus thing really shows our humanity. <laughs> It shows how easily crippled we are despite our technology and our money and power and influence. Um, we can still be brought to our, uh, uh, you know, figuratively speaking, our, our knees and uh, be grasping for answers. And so we really are a uh, more vulnerable, more weak and uh, fragile than, than we let on sometimes. Uh, and so David... It says, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And this is the line, I think, one of the lines that I think is so striking in this time, that it says in verse 4, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So smack dab in the middle of the psalm is this. Like literally, like if you think of the psalm, the poem, as having an architecture to it. Like the valley, the center of the psalm, is this idea that he is in a valley. He's in a dark place. He's in a place where he feels death creeping in on him, or at least death all around him. And I thought, how relevant. I feel like that's, if I turn on the news, if you turn on the news, you might feel this way too. It. it almost feels like a valley of death. Um, and, it, and it's scary, and it can be stressful and worrisome. But what's in, two things are very real to him, and I want two things to be very real to you. One, you can't push out this idea that we're in a valley. It just it feels that way, and we shouldn't ignore that. So that is one thing that is very real, and we should consider it, think about it, and not try to distract ourselves too much from that. So one thing is true of David that in this moment that he feels like he's in a valley. The other thing that's true of him is that God is with him in the valley. God is with us in this valley. But he's not making the darkness go away. And there's no indication from David here that he's doing it in David's time, in this moment at least when he's writing this. 
He's just saying he's with them. And then this is what's so, so interesting to me. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some people say that the, the imagery of shepherd and sheep is leaves the psalm at this place in verse 5. Um, and now, because now it's talking about kind of this dinner table and um, it's, it's talking about God, you know, essentially preparing a meal for us. Um, and then some people do say that the shepherd sheep imagery is kind of following all the way through it. And I, I kind of think it's both. I think the interpretation I, I like the most is the one that acknowledges it's they're both at play. In other words, that there's a there's an ancient custom uh, for uh, the nomadic cultures for shepherds um, that as they were out in the desert and the wilderness places tending to their flock, caring for their flock, uh, which out in the wilderness and in the desert places was considered a dangerous place to all people. In some ways, it just kind of was a, a metaphor for a place of death. It, it you, you couldn't last long out there by yourself and um, the idea would be the custom was that a shepherd was always looking out from his tent uh, for possible strangers for possible foreigners and stragglers coming through and he would the custom was that he would take them in no questions asked he would show them hospitality he would bring them into his tent he would feed them care for them and he would uh, he would deal with them in, in very safe ways. Um, and so you as a wanderer in the desert or in the wilderness, if you stumbled upon a shepherd, you could almost be guaranteed um, safety and a meal and a conversation. And I think that in some ways um, we need to recognize that in this time, I think uh, the idea that I've had percolating and I want in, in your minds as well, is that although it doesn't seem at least right now that God is getting rid of what feels like an enemy, and I think it's okay to consider this virus an enemy, um, although it doesn't seem like God is getting rid of it anytime soon, how and what ways do you see or sense God preparing a table for you in the midst of it? In other words, how is God showing you an unexpected hospitality, what takes place at the table. At the table we have conversation, at the table we get to know each other, at the table we share dreams, fears, we make sense of the day or try to at least. And I wonder if in the midst of this is just God putting us in a place where we really are looking for, um, yes, of course, we're looking for escape and we're looking for safety and we're looking for survival. But I also feel a deep invitation of, from God to experience, for us to experience a hospitality from Him and that He is preparing the table and, and and I can say all of this with such confidence because it is no mystery that by the time you get to John 10 Jesus himself identifies himself as a good shepherd John 10 verse 14 I am the good shepherd I know my own and my own know me and those listening in this time to Jesus when he said this they would have they would have they would have known what that meant in other words they would have known that it meant that a shepherd was willing to risk himself for the good of not only his sheep, but strangers. And that a shepherd uh, was someone uh, that was not only brave, uh, but also uh, deeply hospitable and um, uh, would not um, hold your past against you, but instead take you in, providing a meal, providing safety, providing conversation. And Jesus wants us to picture himself like that here. He is a shepherd. He's a good shepherd. And I, he is in the valley with us. And although I think our prayers should include 
and ask a big ask for him to remove the valley and to bring us back to the mountaintop, so to speak. No matter how long we're in this place of darkness and uncertainty, let us never forget God is preparing a table for us to meet with him. And I pray that you will uh, take advantage of that and you'll think about that. And, and then it, I would encourage you to think about that question. In what ways do you sense or see God preparing a table for you? In other words, in what ways do you see him showing you a hospitality here? Uh, what is hospitality? It is this warmth and welcome of bringing a stranger into to friendship? And um, in what ways do you sense God doing that in your life? I'd love to hear about it, if you're willing. Let us pray together. I encourage you to continue to pray. Father, thank you for today, another day. There is loss in our world and in our country. There is a lot of grief, sadness, despair. And there's unfortunately, Lord, a lot of fighting, a lot of blaming, pointing fingers. People don't know what to do when they're this scared. May we run to you. Both the church and the unchurched, may they run to you. Bring healing. Make the virus go away, Lord. But ultimately, Lord, Make your kingdom show up in a way that we never expected. Bring an awakening to our community, the surrounding communities, and to the world. You are the good shepherd. You are looking out for us. And we are scared. We love you. We praise you even in the midst of being surrounded in the midst of an enemy. It's in Jesus' name that we always pray. Amen.